John Maynard Keynes is well known for writing, In the long run, we are all dead. What he next wrote is not as well known, but perhaps more profound. Economists set themselves too easy, too useless a task if during tempestuous seasons they can only tell us that when the storm is long past, the ocean will be flat. Most risk measures only look past the storms to calm seas, very often a dangerous oversight. We have introduced a new approach to risk measurement that determines exposure to loss all throughout the investment horizon, not just at its conclusion. It does so by estimating the probability of breaching a threshold at any point throughout the investment horizon. Conventional approaches to risk measurement only consider results at the end of the horizon. We have also introduced a new way of measuring value at risk, called continuous value at risk. Whereas value at risk measured conventionally gives the worst outcome at a chosen probability at the end of the horizon, continuous value at risk gives the worst outcome assuming the investment is monitored continuously all throughout the horizon. Together, these new risk measures provide investors with a more complete assessment of their investment's exposure to loss. Let us explore the logic behind these innovations. Consider an investment which has an equal chance of following one of two paths, representing a particular increase or decrease over a single horizon. If we extend this investment over two periods, there are four paths that lead to three possible outcomes because two of the paths converge. As we extend this investment over many periods, the number of paths and potential outcomes grows at a rapid pace. The pattern that is formed by these recombining paths is called a binomial tree. Imagine our investment as these stock certificates, proceeding along this binomial tree with an equal chance of moving up or down from each node. More of the certificates will end up closer to the middle range of the outcomes than the extremes, because the recombining paths converge towards the centre. If we stack the stock certificates as they arrive at the terminus of each path, we notice that the stacks take on a familiar form, a bell-shaped curve, or more precisely, a normal distribution. This bell-shaped curve represents the distribution of potential returns for our investment. Now imagine a barrier represented by this line of fire. What happens if we again allow the stock certificates to proceed from the origin of the binomial tree along the various paths, but we assume the fire line absorbs those certificates that breach it? Many of the stock certificates that would have experienced interim losses and then recovered to a terminus above this barrier will instead be blocked from recovering and accumulate at the end of the fire line. The ending distribution will not be normal. Instead, it will be truncated at the barrier represented by the fire line. This metaphorical fire line represents the thresholds faced by many investors. Some investors, for example, might violate loan covenants if their assets fall below a specified threshold. Other investors face regulatory mandates that require a minimum level of reserves. And often fund managers are terminated when asset values breach loss thresholds. The storms to which Keynes referred occur all throughout the investment horizon, not just at its conclusion, and they often cause investments to breach thresholds from which there is no recovery. Given this unpleasant yet inescapable truth, it is prudent to estimate exposure to loss from the distribution resulting from the fire line than from the normal distribution. This is precisely what our technology does. This example illustrates possible outcomes for an investment with a 10% expected return and a 20% standard deviation over a five-year horizon. When we assume a normal distribution of outcomes, in which there is no absorbing barrier, value at risk, estimated at the fifth percentile, is 23% of the initial value. If instead we define value at risk as an outcome that could occur at any point throughout the five-year horizon, it rises to 39% of the initial value. We define this risk measure as continuous value at risk. There is a more dramatic contrast between end of horizon and within horizon probability of loss. If we focus only on the probability of a 10% loss at the end of five years, we might be unduly comforted to learn the probability is only 11%. 
The likelihood of breaching the same loss threshold at any point throughout the horizon, however, rises to 56%. We are well advised by Keynes to guard against storms that occur along the way than to look beyond them to calm seas. For investors faced with the challenge of maintaining asset values all throughout the investment horizon and not only at its conclusion, our advanced risk measurement technology offers a superior solution.